I don't even remember. Oh, I know what I was saying. The last four nights, we've been praying for a young lady named Taylor Cook. Oh, yeah. Who had double pneumonia and COVID. On Monday night, in the hospital, intensive care. This morning, Evelyn came on during the morning prayer and told us she is home and doing good. Somebody give the Lord a good round of applause. Well, wait, give God glory. Crawfish fettuccine? Wow, really? Wait, are you in the back row, Phyllis, or are you in the front row? Wow. Mela and I say, hi, Aunt Pumpkin. We love you. <laughs> Brother Mike and Sister Shannon have the grandkid with them tonight. Yeah, praise God, Dan. And, you know, we've heard quite a few of those this week. I didn't hear from Brother Warren Walsh today, but um, he said it was going well. And uh, in Jesus' name, all of the details for you, Warren, come together. Amen. And we say every bit of the legal legalities happen and every bit of the insurance happens and every bit of everything you need happens and every bit of your hundredfold return happens. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, homemade spaghetti and homemade garlic bread. Becca, how, where does she live? She lives in <laughs> West Virginia. Hey, all y'all can eat your heart out because I had sauerkraut and kielbasa tonight. <laughs> Leftover. <laughs> it took seven minutes to find this? Well, that just wow. reminded me. I better get over here and send a few oh, of these yep, out to a few people tonight. And then we went silent. We're still here. <laughs> There's just people that need us to share great right to their Thank you, Rebecca, for saying that, for reminding us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube's up if you need to be there. Looks like we got good speeds tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. We had Chick-fil-A. You guys live near a Chick-fil-A? There ain't no Chick-fil-A out here close anywhere, is there? No. No. No, we like Chick-fil-A. Where was we near one? It was one of the times we were on our way back. Oh, here. mom's got one by her house. Good evening, mom. Hope you're here studying with us tonight. Closer now than you were. Amen. Hallelujah. That's that's why you move. I'm moving close to a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and a Burger King and a Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, I'll just put you on the mo immediate share. I have a share that I'll send to some. I'll put you right in there. You'll get a notification from me on Messenger that will that'll take you right there. Um one of the things that's going on is uh, something. Who knows? <laughs> One of the things that's going on that you can really count on is something. Something for sure is happening. Because now all of a sudden, I don't have to open up all these screens to be able to see your comments. And watch this. I can even like them. <laughs> now, I don't know what I'm doing today that I wasn't doing that day, but wow. I actually get to like your post. And tonight, I like everybody's post tonight because I won't be talking. Well, Brother Mike, I told you we was going to start right at the top of the hour. And um, so, um, let's rise. We'll make the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, YouTube's up. Oh. Been running for a while now. 
It's time you get caught up here. You're the boss. You're supposed to already be on top of it. How about we give three cheers for the boss? Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Wait. Wait, let's try it again. Hip, hip. I, I, I made me look like I had a fist, and I am not shaking a fist at my wife. Brother Mike, can we start out with some ladders just over on the side, please? Just in case. <laughs> Actually, Dave and Rebecca, it is some form of limiter on um, on Facebook itself. No, I don't know. I don't know why they limit, but I recommend each of you, if you begin to see that um, you're not receiving um, notifications from the community of faith, you can actually go to the page, unlike it, and then like it again. Unlike it, close it out, go back to it, like it. You might say, Pastor, that's a lot of work. What if I lose everything? You won't lose everything. But that's one of the ways you do it. Or just go over to the page and just click it a bunch, and then that puts it back in your notifications where it belongs. Who knows? That's a good start, Mike. And can we have some roses and chocolate, too? These these ladders, roses, and chocolates are for any husbands who get out of order before we get the program finished and have an altar call. <laughs> Sorry, keep it in line, boys. <laughs> <laughs> this is to keep us out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right. And um, wow, what a sweetie. Here we go. Are we ready? It is now. You forgot to do all that. Well, you know, Rebecca, it, you shouldn't have to do that. Honestly, you should not have to go in and like and unlike and do all that. You shouldn't have to do that. That's ridiculous. But it's one of the things you do. Anytime any page that you normally receive from all of a sudden is no longer in your notifications, then just go to their, even if it's just one of your friends, go to their page and then just click and like or something on every post they got for a while. And then that pops it back into your notifications. That's just one way to be able to always be connected to what we got going. There's no other way. There's no other explanation for it. And um, uh, who knows? Sometimes while, while you're watching, if you see my furrowed brow and I scowl in some way or <laughs> please understand that what I see here sometimes is just like, are you kidding me? See now, there you go, Mike. Now yeah, see, that's a good wow. start. That's a good start. There you go. That, that, that should get us through. All right, everybody, we got it. We got it made. <laughs> Even Becca got involved. <laughs> Like maybe. <laughs> no way. No way. Oh, yeah. Back no, no, listen. <laughs> you guys can't all be focused on me. There's got to be other folks that's going to need this tonight. <laughs> yes, Phyllis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You can hear, fellas. Uh, Mike, I was offended at that tonight, Pastor. <laughs> I'll I'll require some chocolate <laughs> to make it better. Now yeah, chocolate makes it better. Have we rose and said the pledge yet? No, we haven't. <laughs> Should we find out whose fault that is, or just let it slide and keep moving? <laughs> just pass the chocolate, and we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and what's crazy is I don't know where you guys get all these emojis because I don't have any of them. I don't know where they come from. I don't know how to get them here. Um, I don't seem to have the ability to go find anything like that. So hallelujah. We're glad somebody can throw up some fun stuff. And thanks for making this a fun place to be, guys. We love it. We really do. You know, every day before the program comes on, 
I would encourage you to pray and say, Father, make this time tonight the most enjoyable time we've ever had. Wait, that's not necessarily laughing. That's not necessarily crying. That's not necessarily whew, revelation. It's just, Father, make this the most enjoyable evening that this community of faith has known yet. Why? Because then everybody who shows up here will have, will receive the fragrance of Christ. We, we should be the smell of Jesus. Yeah, amen. Every single time we come here, because that's what happens. Good evening, Sister Wilma. Amen. Houghton Lake is here. Woo! <laughs> sure do love you guys. Sure do love every one of you. West Virginia, Michigan, North Carolina, Louisiana, North Dakota. That's just what we can see right now. Man, I really... I'm really trying to be focused and start. We're going to start right early tonight, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Very great. It is now time to rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance, have a moment of silence, and sing God Bless America. Here we go. Render your honor. Let's make our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have a moment of silence as we remember those who are missing in action. Those who've paid the last full measure of devotion. Those who today bear the scars of battle in their spirit, their soul, and in their body. The families of all of those who've stood beside them for every veteran who served so faithfully, protecting and defending this nation and its great constitution. This moment of silence lasts for 21 seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys fired at the funeral of a fallen soldier. This moment of silence begins now. Now, if you will, join me in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, why with foam? God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet. And now, let's uh, 
pray for the United States of America. God bless America. Amen. <laughs> I just thought I would pray short tonight. <laughs> and, and I'm just checking out my wife, see if she's paying attention. All right. Everybody say it with me. God bless America. God bless America. God bless America. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Pastor, can we pray that short? Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Do you mean it? I do. I mean it. And I know you mean it. And I thank you for being a part of what we do every day. Well, Brother Mike, if you'd like to call, we can get ourselves started anytime soon. It got real quiet, didn't it? Like, wait, wait, wait. Did, did Pastor really just pray that short? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yep. Shannon just posted. He's in the bathroom. No. <laughs> no, come on. You know what? This is Saturday Night Live. And uh, <laughs> um, we're not short on prayer in this group, guys. Have you noticed that? We pray a lot here. I'll talk while Mike's getting ready. Don't don't be freaked out, Mike. I just started to pray, and the Father said, just bless America and keep moving. But, you know, I, I, I got thinking this morning, if you haven't seen the Giving 15 from Dutch Sheets five days ago, I would encourage you to go see it. Now, I know that in December, you could have said, yeah, there's a lot of politics in that, but... um. He's pretty much got all the politics out. And what do we do? Everybody was in the same position in December. I know I was too. Like, what in the world is going on? But he tells the story of how Giving 15 got started. And, and I'm going to tell you something. When he started saying that he had 5,000 people that joined him for prayer every day, I'm like, wow, that's that's a pretty serious group of followers right there. Yeah. And then I went and looked at the days. And right now he's running about 70,000 people that are following that give him 15 every day. And you might say, Pastor, who is this guy? Who is this Dutch Sheets guy? Dutch Sheets is one of the greatest men on prayer our generation has known. Like he's written like how many books? 30 books? 30 books, 20 books, something. He's written quite a few books. And most of it is on prayer and the body of Christ. And he's a very powerful man of God. If you didn't see this morning's noon prayer, I encourage you to go see it. Uh, start out with Dutch sheets on uh, giving 15. And then um, watch what God said through the rest of us. Throughout the morning, because um, where God's going with this group of people in the in the near future, is you're going to be able to see it, and it's in that same word that He just said. And the reason the Holy Spirit had me do that is because what you see going on here, you can see that man tell you the story 
It's the same thing happened with him. And I'm, I don't, I don't give to Dutch sheets ministry. I don't, he's not a spiritual leader of mine. He is a spiritual leader that is solid in the ways of God. And um, I don't have any problem saying to you, this is a, this is a man that you can listen to and you can hear my skin is in Ontario, California. Jim Raymond, my niece in Washington State, D.D. Uvila. My granddaughter, Monique Prophet, is in Tennessee. And my nephew is in Leesville, Steve Ganey. Here we go. All over the United States of America. Thank you, well, um, Rebecca. I mean, Phyllis K. Raymond. Well, all right. Brother Mike's over here. Let's see if we can get Blog Talk Radio tuned up here. Good evening, caller. You're live. Can we pray for you? Yes, please do. <laughs> Lord, help this dear lost soul to find you. <laughs> In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> Saying, that seems to be the path we're going down right now. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to, to just shock everybody, but as soon as I started praying, I just heard the Father say, just bless America and keep moving. Um, All righty then. He's the one that's going to make the prayers come to pass anyways. <laughs> Not me. All right. Amen. All right. Just check and make sure everything's all right. Are you all right? I'm Smurfy. Are you all right? <laughs> Somehow I've never seen you too much Smurfy, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good. Well, you know, it is a family show. <laughs> it is a family show. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, this is the verse that God gave me before we get as we get started. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. And amen and amen. That's second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. And all throughout this year. As we have been um, having this program every night, just been here since March 22nd of 2020, God has been performing an amazing miracle in Mike and Shannon's life. You guys have watched their spiritual growth as we have. You've heard the stories and the testimonies. And Brother Mike's got another one tonight. And I'm just going to shut up and let him go. Uh, that was a good opening verse. I I, I like that. Um, and you think about it, Mike, that's where yeah. God, God has had us now for about a month and a half. Right. Go ahead. I, I won't interrupt anymore too much. I won't interrupt anymore for the next 30, 45 <laughs> seconds. I promise. <laughs> Well, it's okay because I interrupted myself because I just had some self-inflicted technology thing because I had notes with verses, so I wouldn't have to thumb through a Bible, and um, I don't know what I did, but my screen just went blank. That's okay. I hate it when uh -huh. happens. <laughs> I know. I know. And while you were talking, I was trying to get over to an auto save or something, and... Um, yeah, boy. Okay. Um, that'll just add another element to this. So now even I don't know what I'm going to say. So we should all be very, very, very afraid right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, this is kind of a hard testimony for me to give. Um, because things like 
this have a tendency to offend? And the only real way to deliver it is to speak it from both bales and teach it straight and hard. And I've never taught a testimony before. Um, luckily, you know, I, I got Shannon in the other room here and she can run in here and smack me upside the head <laughs> if I get too far off track. And, uh, you know, with pastor in charge of the mute button, he can pause it if need be to, uh, yeah, we're going to hit that from a different angle over here. Slow down. Going to really in for a second. Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> and he, did, he muted me just to make sure that it worked. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> yeah. And I had many conversations with the spirits and pastors, Sam and I first discussed going live with this, you know, and it's, how do you prevent offense? How do we ensure this edifies the body? And there's really only one way, and that's to lay it all out on the table. You know, the flesh in us, myself included, oftentimes we want to compare yeah. and to measure ourselves using somebody else as a standard. Yep. And that's not how testimonies Never. work. Never. Amen. As, as it is written by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we overcome. And I'd, I'd kind of like to tell you guys this will be as quick as the other testimonies, <laughs> just a hair longer than Pastor Sam's prayer. But it's not going to be quick at all. Um, I know Sister Gwen is in the back praying that we go all the way past the 92nd lady so we get that jump. I'm not sure if I can deliver on that. Um <laughs> But, you know, I, I've never seen or tried or given a testimony this way. Um, I had a lot of verses that I was going to reference. Um, those have disappeared. Wow. I'm still going to reference the verses because there's still some very much on my mind right now. Um and any but verse, I'm going to go back, back farther. Any verse that you say, Glad Mike, pastor. any verse you say, we'll throw the reference in there, even if you don't know what the reference is. That's what you do every night. So we'll do the same thing for you. Everybody pay attention. Well, Get your I Bible appreciate on. that. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of working overload on a Bible gateway right now as I'm talking, getting some of them up, the ones I know I'm going to. Um So where I'd like to go with this is I'd like to go way back and tell you guys where Shannon and I fell short. Because I think that's a very important aspect and critical for this to edify the body the way that it's intended. Because as God moved for us, he's also willing to help others overcome and win. And as Pastor Sam and I were talking, you know, we both wanted this testimony to hit the airwaves. And we also knew that we needed to hear from the Spirit. And just like the Spirit gave Sam an opening verse, he, he also gave me one, which I've already pulled up. <laughs> Go Holy Spirit. And I was kind of overcome with it because I was like, wow, that's a powerful word. And it was Philippians 1, 15 through 17. And this is Paul talking. And he says, some indeed preach Christ, even from envy and strife. And some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition. Wow. Not sincerely. Wow. Supposing to add affliction to my chains. But the latter out of love knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. You know, that is just so good. Even on Paul's day, the way I take this is there were pipsqueak chicken sissy preachers. <laughs> and that's as nice as I can be about that. You know, there were preachers 
trying to make a name for themselves. Out there making a couple true statements, but not speaking the truth at all. Yeah. And in so doing, instead of people getting set free, people were getting bound up tighter in the chain of religiosity. And I feel like what the spirit was saying to me is don't sugarcoat this. Speak it out of love, but don't water it down. So guys, the same points I'm going to harp on are the points where Shannon struggled, where I struggled. The areas both of us needed to be stretched. The baggage we had to stop carrying and cast aside. Now, this is probably going to hit pretty close to home for a lot of us. So I'm just going to say right now, don't be offended. You know, Shannon and I, we struggle with this too. And just as God was faithful to lead us out of it, he's going to be faithful to lead you out of it as well. Yeah, amen. Yeah, it's, oh man, it's just so much. Um, there were many events leading up to where we are right now. Um, really blunt, the faith we had at the beginning was nowhere near sufficient to see us through the process. I'm, I'm going to touch on some past testimonies um, that have been spoken here because they were instrumental in this testimony coming to pass. Okay. But before we go any farther, I, I, I think just to get us all on the same page, we need to we need to define believe and faith. Hacker's going to get a concerned look on his face right now, but that's okay. <laughs> believe in faith. All right. Believe. Believe is to accept something as true. Faith. The definition of faith is complete trust and confidence. It's that Holy Spirit swagger we talk about. It's that Godfidence coming from the inside out. Faith and believe are not interchangeable words. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please them. It doesn't mention believe anywhere in there. It's uh, good. I can believe God is capable. I can believe God would move for another person. I can believe God wants to move for me, but still have absolutely zero faith that he will. Let's think about this from a different angle. Believing is a stepping stone on the way to faith. We must accept it as true before we can have that complete trust and confidence. Since my granddaughter is here right now, I'll, I'll use her as an example. When I toss my granddaughter up in the air, my daughter believes I will catch her. My granddaughter has faith. My granddaughter squeals without a care in the world. She has that complete trust and confidence. My daughter accepts. <laughs> I, will not I will not drop her. But how many times have we seen a mother in such a situation say, I can't watch this, and they just turn around and walk away. They don't stop it because they believe. But they walk away instead of watching their baby have a good time because they don't have the faith. You know, when our girls were babies, Shannon wouldn't watch. But she watches me toss mail around. With our girls, she believed I would catch them. With Mela, she's beyond believing, beyond that stepping stone, and she's moved into faith. And this starts many months ago, a long time ago. Seems like eons ago because you perfectly blonde. I don't recognize Shannon anymore. I'm sure Shannon doesn't recognize me anymore. Um, I'm going to be a little brief in the background info as it's... Uh, Entails a little bit more than mine and Shannon's story. But I'll get a lot more in depth as we go. Um, Shannon and I received word 
that we were going to have to move out of our house or reach an agreement. And I'll say more on this later. But just to get this out here right now at the beginning, um, this was by no fault of any of the involved private parties. Notice I said private. Um, so we moved in faith trying to get a resolution to it. We called the people we were supposed to call. And many times it seems that you get like a certain Command you to work. Hey, Brother Mike. And there were times. Hey, Brother Mike. Yep. Are you walking while you're talking? No. All right. Because you keep. Should I be? You, well, no, you're uh, every now and then the signal comes and goes a little bit. I was just thinking if you was walking somewhere, getting underneath a roof or something, um, it might it might help not to be underneath that roof. But if you're not walking, then that's just the technology and we command it to work. I've got excellent speed on my end. And so we command this technology to work so this Amen. testimony can come out Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Go ahead, brother. You're doing good, man. This is Amen. awesome. This is awesome. I can get away from my AirPods if you think that would help, but usually AirPods work very well. Yeah. And that's the only thing. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll just keep going like we're going, and yep. if I need to get rid of the AirPods, we'll get rid of the AirPods. Yep. Um, you know, and there were times as we were speaking faith over the phone while trying to get to a resolution. It seemed like the person on the other end was giving us a faith response back. And then the craziest thing happened. Out of nowhere, we were handed a resolution. And it was presented as uh, only for you will open this door and you guys can come right in. I've already pulled up the next verse. <laughs> and for this, we're going to go to Genesis, Genesis 3, 1 through 5. This is even the garden talking to that pit squeak chicken sissy snake. Yep. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serp serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in that day, you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And the resolution offered to us when it came under scrutiny, it wasn't a God answer at all. It was the adversary trying to weasel his ugly little head yeah. and under the guise of it being a God answer. You know, much like in the garden, there were some true statements. But it was far from the truth. You know, it was like, here, you can have it. Why wouldn't God want you to do this? God wants you to have it. Well, I'm here to tell you, thank God for discernment. Yes. Because while I'm going to leave them nameless, what I will say is what the local financial institution was recommending was at the best unethical. Wow. And at worst, and honestly, the way I read it, it was downright illegal and theft. Wow. So when we're waiting on the God answer, it's real easy to jump to conclusions and say, oh, there it is. But we always have to pause and ask ourselves, is it moral? Is it ethical? Right. Is it in line with his word? Come on, man. Now. We had the faith required for the first battle. But then it was like, now what? 
Well, we went back to my jam, which is X16. You, you guys know I love me some X16. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we followed the example of Paul and Silas when they were in jail. And we sang and we worshiped. And we spoke faith into it. We know this situation is not your will. Show us the kingdom solution. And we never fell out of those faith-based confessions. But what we didn't know at the time is we didn't have the faith and I'm going to go somewhere or the obedience level Wow. required to get farther. I see this goes back to preaching it straight. Those pipsqueak chicken sissy preachers are going to water down the word and not use words like obedience. Yeah, obedience. Yep. That's a pretty big word. But I'm going to tell you, it's the only way to get free. If we want to grow more in God than we ever have, if we want to go farther in our walk with him than we ever have, it's going to require more faith, more obedience, yep. more forgiveness, <laughs> and more love. Come on, man. Wow. You know, in, in Luke 6, 46 to 49, because we're a group of believers that believe in the red letters. Jesus said, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. Yep. He is like a man building a house yep. who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like the man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of the house was great. And I haven't had time to pull this one up, so I'm going to try and quote it. But in Isaiah 119, it says, if you are willing and obedient and obedient and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Hey, Brother Mike. Yes, sir. That was my second verse I wrote down tonight for tonight in this notes is right there. Come on, spirit. <laughs> I like that. Go, man. <laughs> you just fired me up saying that. <laughs> now, now I'm going to get to where Mike wasn't being so obedient. Uh -oh. You know, Pastor Sam brought it up last week, which I never spoke on the program, and I'm just going to speak it a hint now, <laughs> except I'm going to go a completely different angle. Because like I said, guys, I wasn't being – very obedient. I was giving God excuses. I was giving him a bunch of yeah, but <laughs> you know, those self-inflicted hindrances. But then God did something. He kind of gave me a little push. He gave me an instruction. He knew I'd follow. He sent me to a church I'd never been to. And I heard a message that precisely matched. What I'd been hearing and what Pastor Sam had been saying to me. And that led to a conversation of, I don't see it, Lord. But I'm going to move in that direction. Show me an infallible proof. Amen. So I submitted the application. There were letters of recommendation that were written. Less than five days later, the tuition money was placed in my hand. Two days after that, the tuition sower and his wife gave their lives to Christ. Now, why is that important? Well, what we didn't know at the time, and those around us didn't know, but it's crystal clear now, is we had a lack of faith and a lack of obedience. And in John 10, 
37 to 38, Jesus said, if I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do, but you do not believe me, believe the works. Amen. That you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Hmm. In that testimony I just spoke, there were two works. And I learned from both of them. The tuition money was great, but I didn't need it. So in that instance, I learned that God provides beyond our needs. He is a God of excess. But the most important thing to me I learned is that obedience bears fruit. Every Almost immediately, two people gave their lives to Christ. Just like that. And that moved, yeah, I know. And that moved me beyond wow. what mere words could ever express. It was that moment that this walk with our father took on a completely different meaning. This wasn't something we just did. This is who we were. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to punch in at 8 p.m. Eastern and punch out at 11 p.m. Eastern. Come on. We were going to sell. We were going to sell out 24-7, 365. At that moment, we were all in. But that comes with other battles, guys. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke, I, I'm going there. You know, in, in Luke 22, 31 to 32, Surprised I'm remembering all these. <laughs> it says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith, your faith, not your belief, the belief was unshaken. It was the faith that was going to get shaken. Yep. That your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. This is something, again, that the feel-good chicken sissy preachers aren't going to say. <laughs> they preach the fluff and they overlook the meat and taters. Yeah, yeah. Once you come to the realization there is and there will be fruit, you're going to have to fight for it. Yep. The, the enemy doesn't care about the material things. The enemy didn't care about the $500. He does care about the soul winning yes. on the back end of that. Yes. Whether we realize it or not, that new level of obedience and that new level of faith is going to lead to soul winning in our sphere of influence. You're going to get sifted. You're going to have to prove your obedience. And I'm not telling you this to scare you. No. I'm, I'm saying... I'm saying it because you can and you will win. In the sifting, all that's going to happen is the chafe, that husk that's not worth anything, is going to blow away and you'll be left with just the grain. That pure faith that can move mountains. And as Shannon and I were going through this, um, I was live. I don't know what was going on or if it was when we were doing Monday nights or but. I remember I spoke on 1 Peter 5, 9 and 10. And, uh, man, I spent an hour and a half at just in verse 9. And in the Passion Translation, it says, Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of troubles you endure. And then, after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will firmly I'm sorry. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up. <laughs> I stayed in these verses a long time that night I taught it. I'm not going to do that now, but this is so powerful, guys. I'm going to pause to make just a couple points because this is how we fight with strong, vigorous faith. Then we go a little bit farther in the verse. 
and it says your brothers and sisters have experienced the same thing. Same thing. Amen. It's part of the reason. It's part of the reason I'm teaching this instead of just speaking it. So we can all see that we're not alone. We can reach out to the body. Yeah. Chances are one of us, if not all of us have been through the same thing and we can help you. And then the best part, man, verse 10, this just gets me every time. He will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Personally. Personal. He's not going to delegate it to somebody else. You are important enough that he will personally restore you and make you stronger than ever. He will personally set you in place and build you up. I can't harp on that point enough. And at this point, we had the faith capable of seeing us through the rest of it. But God wasn't done yet. We kind of needed to walk out the obedience part. But the wonderful thing about that is when you witness God giving you an instruction and the result is the heavens rejoicing as people give their lives to Christ. <laughs> It creates a fire so deep inside you that it just can't be quenched. You can't get enough of it. You just keep chasing. You keep chasing. You keep chasing. Amen. 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 And this, you know, this leads us to a prophetic word that was spoken over us by a mighty man of God. And I have a recording of it, and I listen to it at least weekly, and I pretty much have it memorized. So. When I say he said, he said, and I quote, um, I pretty much mean, yeah, this is word for word. Um, and he said, because they are walking with you and their time is in your hand and this that wanted to take away their life has lost its grip on them. This man didn't have any idea what was going on in Shannon's my personal life. Not a clue. And he's already speaking that it's done in the realm of the spirit and it's lost its grip on him. And then he went on to say, I say the spiritual promotion side of it comes into a perfect flow that is beyond dynamic and is powerfully focused and deeply sourced. Sourced them deeper than they ever thought possible for the flow of the spiritual promotion. And in the last couple of seconds, he also said we would do this mostly together. So while our housing situation at the time was, let's call it what it is, it was a complete and utter debacle. <laughs> we weren't focused on it. Yeah. Wow. A lot of people probably thought we were just flat out nuts. <laughs> but we took that prophetic word instead of dwelling on the house, Shannon packed up and went on the road with me for a month while I was working. When you don't know what you're going to do or where you're going to live, what your next step is, so, uh, I'm getting tongue-tied, but our next step was the least logical thing to do. We took off for a month. We lived in Philippians 4, 8, which says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Amen. And again, the obedience bears fruit because it's Shannon just packed up, no questions asked. And when on this line, I was working a month-long sabbatical for her, Shannon got her heavenly prayer language. Another tool that we, that we were going to need as we dealt with the other situation. And that kind of leads right into the next point. We couldn't go any higher until our forgiveness went higher. <laughs> Shannon had to let go of some things and forgive herself. And immediately when she let that go, Immediately, she started speaking and praying in the spirit. Just like that. 
Hey, Mike. Just like that. Yeah. Just pause for a second. And and let's just say that. Um, because it, just because that happened to Shannon doesn't mean that that's going to happen to everyone. But every single one of our lives, the number one place we should always look when anything gets stopped up and doesn't just flow is get serious and check your inside to see if there's something you're not forgiving somebody on. Even if it's yourself. Who who would have thought that the most important person you had to forgive was yourself? Amen. How many times... Do we say, I've forgiven everybody else, but you don't forgive yourself? I, I'll tell you this morning, just last night, I was talking to God. I heard Brother Terry Mize say, do good to have a conscience, free from offense between God and man. And I'm like, am I really offended at you, God? He goes, yeah, you are. I'm like, well, not anymore. Why would Paul say that except that we can get an offense with God? And I'm not trying to take over Mike's message, but the number one thing you always look at, if something starts stopping up the flow, is look in here and say, what is inside me? What is inside me? And then watch God work a mighty work. You're doing it excellent, Mike. You're doing excellent. So let's just stop here for a second. I mean, pa Pastor wanted to stop here, and I kind of do too. Come on. <laughs> I, I mean, let's talk about forgiveness. And it's not just others, but it's ourselves. You know, and this just goes completely with the testimony and the flow of it because about a month after Shannon and I forgave ourselves, Gwen Shannon and I spoke it on this program. It was completely spur of the moment. Yeah. And Gwen made such a powerful statement. You know, um, I was the one on camera. Shannon was on one cell phone. Gwen was on the other. I didn't even really need to be there because Shannon and Gwen were rocking it. But in the middle of it, I paused and I said, did you just hear what Gwen said? And what Gwen said is, and I'll never forget it. She said, it says, love our neighbors as ourselves, not love our neighbors instead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. That is so good. That is such a true statement. And from there, we, you know, we kind of dove into the hindrances to forgiveness. And we looked at the Lord's Prayer, you know, and in Matthew 6, I believe. 12 ish fear the ish <laughs> it says forgive us our debts Jesus. as we forgive our debtors Amen. but then if we jump down a few verses yep i don't know 14 and 14 15. and 15 yep go. it says for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not Forgive men. Neither will your father forgive you. And guys, oftentimes we are quick to forgive others. But we're real, real, real slow to forgive ourselves. And the next step that Shannon and I had to take in this process was to forgive ourselves for that housing situation we were in. Not that we were to blame. But because we were holding ourselves accountable for something that completely, it, it, it just didn't belong. It wasn't something we could go higher with holding on to and clinging to. Right. You know, and in Romans 8.1, it says there's no condemnation. And in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says all things have passed away. Amen. So we forgave ourselves and buried it in the past where it belonged. Amen. And guys, the very next day, the, next the day. very next day, the very next day, we move, God moves, we move, God moves, we move, God moves, we move, God moves. 
You move in that obedience and it will blow your mind at how quick God moves. The very next day after we forgave ourselves, I was told to contact the person. And guys, it did not make sense. It made zero sense. But I contacted her. Because are we going to be obedient and have faith in the labor he chooses? Or are we going to think that we can do better and question his judgment? (laughs) Because I'm here to tell you there was only one person on the face of the earth at this moment who could pull this off for us, and she was it. In minutes, my email was filled with houses. Unlike the unethical, immoral, and and possibly illegal solution that was proposed before, I could feel the shift this time. Come on, man. There was no doubt. There was no doubt. God's got this. You know, we started making plans. Okay, we're going to look at these houses the next time I come home. But there was still one area that had to be stretched. I told you, Sam, I was probably going to go here, and I am. <laughs> I absolutely am. I'm, I'm getting pushed here. I'm getting pushed hard here. I, um, I still got the mute button. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good, Mike. You're yes, doing good, you man. My current level couldn't go any higher. And... I'm not going to speak everything that happened over this because a lot of it's not my story, but I'm going to speak on my story. The night before Thanksgiving and into Thanksgiving Day, um, there was an assignment that led to an encounter on a mountainside in Tennessee. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Tell it. And I spoke this on COF Thanksgiving night, and I said, I don't know what broke in me. But I could feel a chain get disintegrated in my spirit. Amen. On the way home, I was telling Sister Gwen about it. And she hit the nail on the head pretty good. She said she's overflowing with the anointing. And she couldn't help but spill some of it off on you, Mike. You know, it's, it's only been in the past week that I realized what was imparted to me in that mom coddle hug it was love Mm -hmm. it was the unconditional never ending no condemnation non-judgmental love of the father I was okay with loving people yeah but it was kind of like you know I'm over I'm gonna love you from here and I want you to stay over there while I'm loving (laughs) completely completely broke. I mean, those who knew me before can speak to that. I mean, I was real tight with my inner circle. Um, Nobody, Shannon included, has ever seen me hug my dad. That's just not something that happened. Um, So in that hug, let me pull this up. In that hug was 1 Corinthians 13. And I think I'm going to go verses one through scroll, 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 seven. (laughs) So I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Come on. But have not love. I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love. I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's what was imparted to me on that mountainside in Tennessee. 
And unbeknownst to me at the time, I was going to need it a short period later. So I'm going to fast forward a couple days. Hey, Mike. <clears throat> and, yeah. You said, you know, you, you gave the verse when you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. And when you made that trip to Tennessee. Wow, yeah. You created. Come on. You were there speaking. You created so many infallible proofs to so many people in my family that I couldn't myself. But you did. Amen. Un yeah. It seemed we all had a God appointment that day. Undeniable. Infallible proofs of God. And people just walked around saying, he he drove all the way here? I mean, to my son, it was huge. He wrecked his car. But the other people were like, that dude just drove all the way from Michigan to Tennessee, dropped you off and turned around and went back? Now, now listen. Mike's not looking for no glory. That was a, that was a, at the beginning, it was all right and it was fun. It was great. And then we all fell asleep and Mike had to drive all the way there and all the way back. And that is an obedience <laughs> level that takes you past 24 hours of life. And God don't sleep sometimes. I don't know what his deal is. He don't sleep and he doesn't expect us to sleep sometimes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, and so here is an infallible proof for Mike in Tennessee by a hug from my mom. And as Gwen said, an anointed hug. An anointed hug. And my mom, <clears throat> my mom did not judge people. Never has. Never has. And yet you showing up to receive the blessing from God for yourself just transforms so many people. And that's how God is in every part of our life. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Tag. Yeah. Ooh. Man, that was. Your mom is just such a mighty, mighty, mighty woman of God and such an awesome lady. We well, have to remember, Mike, too, though. You such just, an awesome lady. You safely delivered her son and two of her grandsons to her family for Thanksgiving. I want to hug you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I'm a hunger now, <laughs> which is an infallible proof to a lot of people. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you All know, right, before my eyes start wait, leaking, wait. I'm going to keep going because you guys almost got my eyes leaking here. Wait, let me say one more thing on that. <laughs> let me say one more thing on that, Mike. You never know. You never know. What it is God has set up behind some circumstances that he presents you to do, you don't know. But when you get these circumstances mm -hmm. and you say, well, it doesn't make any sense. And it's going to take this effort and this effort for me to make that happen. And they don't make any sense. Then there's only one thing you can have left to say. Is it may not make sense, but I can tell I'm supposed to do this, and I guarantee you it will make faith. Come on. Absolutely. Tag, you're it. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to walk away from that before I start getting muttery eyes. So I'm going to fast forward just a couple days. And, uh, you know, Pastor Sam and Leanne, 
and Rob, Gwen and Dave and me and Shannon, we were all at Gwen's house. And uh, we were all going to go to Dr. Barthley's for an evening service. And, uh, you know, just something about being with your brothers and sisters who are bold in faith, you know. And we were talking about the house, and I said one of the boldest faith-filled statements <laughs> I've ever made on, on my behalf. And I said something to the effect of, I'm not worried about it. There will be an accepted offer before I leave for Iowa. Guys, I was leaving for Iowa in a week, and we had not looked at a single house. My, my, my. So now we're going to get into the end of the process and where things are starting to come to pass. Now, we all know it takes money to buy a house. Yes, sir. So I'm sitting at the kitchen table, and I open up my laptop, and I log into my 401k, and I start having conversations. What numbers am I pressing? Because I have no idea. And the number given to me made no sense. <laughs> When you think about the down payment, the closing cost, et cetera, it can be a lot of money. Yeah. Man. And then there's penalties and taxes that they take off the top. Yep. Generally, whatever you withdraw out of your 401k, you're only going to see half. Hmm. And I was instructed to withdraw $23,000. And I didn't think that was enough because, and and the natural in my way of thinking, I'm like, that's like twelve five, Lord. Um, closing cost, I don't know, six seven grand down payment, originates fees, blah 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 escrow account, et cetera, et cetera. No way, no way. So I paused for a second, and I said, "Is this what you said?" Yeah, that was definitely what he said. Okay, 23 grand it is. And you can only do this once, guys. You can only do this once. So if you're not hearing this right, yeah, right, you just blew your once. Yeah. So clicky, clicky, I enter the bank information so it can be wired into my account, and I hit submit. A couple days later, I get a notification from the bank. That $22,915.37 was deposited. That was about double what I was expecting. The only fee was Fidelity's administrative fee. No taxes, no penalties. Now, this didn't make any sense. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. I'm still, I'm, I'm not thinking about the God answer in this, I'm thinking, whoa, 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 something's wrong. I'm, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? So I immediately logged in to Fidelity thinking, oh, I pushed wrong numbers somewhere. And I looked at the balance. And I looked at the withdrawal. Now I'm even more confused. Because what I'm seeing is absolutely no, no sense. So then I printed a statement because there's a lot more information on those. And my jaw about hit the floor. And I texted Pastor Sam a pic. Yeah. And I retexted it to him before the program. If he wants to share it, he can. If he doesn't, that's fine too. I blocked out part of the personal information. but So I withdrew $23,000. The change in market value was $24,537.24. I had more in my 401k after the withdrawal than I did before. And, and a, a post-election market Come on. that was losing value and plummeting every day. The account gained over twenty four thousand dollars. 
impossible but Jesus. That's amazing. Now, <laughs> now, the labor that was sent, and this is where your mom falls into this a little bit, and probably why I was pushed in that direction. The labor that was sent was from our past. And there was a fence there. And Shannon and I couldn't proceed if there was a shred of unforgiveness, a drop of yeah. doubt. Or if we weren't filled to the point of overflowing with faith and love. Yeah. So the hug on that side of the mountain was going to get us all, get all of us past the path. Wow. Because love can't be fake. No. Words spoken from love did not sound like clashing symbols and noise. They resonate in the depths of your very being. Yep. You see, guys, this wasn't just redemption in mine and Shannon's life but in her life as well. And as soon as we saw the condo, we knew. It was everything we didn't know that we were looking for. Think about that for a second, because it makes perfect sense. It was everything we didn't know we were looking for. Now, if we go back to that prophetic word, there's no maintenance. Nothing is tying us to the house. Shannon, go with me for months, and the snow is going to get plowed, the grass is going to get cut. All the excuses are gone. But then that pesky little snake guy tried to poke his head in it again. That spirit of confusion. Hey, Brother Mike, Brother Mike, just pause for a second. We're having another one of those moments where um, it's breaking up. So I'll just say hi. We love you. This is Brother Mike telling an amazing story. We're shouting glory, hallelujah, and this technology works. Amen. All right, back up about 30 seconds and try again. <laughs> All right, so that would probably put us to this pesky little weasel yep. snake defeated foe. Sorry, son of a gun. Isn't yeah. that something? He tried to poke his head back in it. And, you know, the, the contracts were coming to us, and it was like, okay, well, we're good with most of this. We need to make these changes. And then the contract will come back with our changes. But things that we negotiated either verbally or in the previous revision were reverting back to the old language. And our agent was saying, eh, I'm just not comfortable with that this is written. More than once, Shannon and I told her, you know, you are who was sent. Of this, we have no doubt. We don't proceed until you are completely satisfied. And this lasted until the morning I was supposed to leave for Iowa. And Shannon and I are praying in the spirit, speaking this, speaking that done this very morning. Um, our agent FaceTimes us and says, we can't sign what he just sent. You know, she, she knows this is the bottom of the ninth. I have to drive to Iowa. And she, and she pointed to the fence and she said, let's send a purchase agreement, lock him in, and he will be bound to our terms and conditions. And we agreed. So she prepared the purchase agreement. We electronically signed it. And he accepted it in minutes. Wow. As it was spoken at Gwen's house, it was done before I left for Iowa. The earnest deposit check was dropped off literally on my way out of the town to go to Iowa. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> now, we could stop right there, but God wasn't done yet. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. There's, 
there's months more of him. Woo! So you guys know about the $23,000. We're believers. And this is the most amazing thing ever, Pastor Sam. Come yeah, I, I said the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> Not all the money in our 401k account was tied on. What did God do with this? He gave us the opportunity to ensure that every wow. penny that went into this house was tied. Wow. So at $23,000 withdrawal, first thing we did is we tied. First thing. And then we sowed a seed where we were told. And then, you know, it was a big earnest deposit to lock him in, but we were okay with that. He couldn't weasel out, neither could we. So there was a $10,000 earnest deposit check that got written. So at that very moment, I was driving to Iowa. We were eh, about $3,500 short of what we were going to need to close. And I was... I, I I wasn't expecting God to cover it. I told Shannon, things are going to be tight for a bit. But we can come up with this before closing. Well, that wasn't his plan. And as everyone who was here in early July knows, or January, we were instructed to go to D.C., we didn't know why. We thought it was for the rally. We didn't question it. We just sat it up and we left. Well, we ended up in the tent cities ministering to people. She had cast out a team. <laughs> that was awesome. But that trip cost money. Right. Where we were told told to sew cost money. Yep. Where we were told to sew after DC cost money. <laughs> See, God's plan was never for Shannon and I to do any of this in our own strength. Wow. Wow. So in, so in this, after, or let me say post-purchase agreement time, we were taken somewhere where we could not recover. Wow. I didn't really look at the bank balance until near the end of January. We only took out a savings when instructed. And uh, on January 20th, we were $6,000 short of being <laughs> where I thought we needed to be to close. Now, there is absolutely no way, no way, no how that Shannon and I can come up with that in two and a half months. I'm having conversations with God saying, Lord, I don't know where I messed up. I thought I only put money where you told me. I can't cover this. I can't make this up. Uh, and he said, I didn't ask you to make it up. Wow. Whoa. Thank God. Praise Jesus. I don't have to make this up. <laughs> and I calmed down for a couple days. <laughs> but it was only a couple days because a few days later, he told me to sell seven hundred and fifty dollars. Guys, there is nothing about that which makes sense. We were six thousand dollars away from where we needed to be, and we were being told that by following this instruction, we were going to be six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars away from where we needed to be. Wow, isn't that something? Well. It makes absolutely no sense. So we had two choices. We could stop listening and try and go it in the flesh, knowing we were going to fail. <laughs> or we could have faith. Yep. So we sowed that seed. And everywhere else he told us to sow. Because deep down, we knew that we knew that we knew that we knew that the only way we could mess this up was to put our hand in it. We had to step back and let God be God. Um, that's, a huge, that's a big statement. Huge step, yeah. So we did what we were told. And, you know, guys, it's kind of funny because 
I didn't really check the savings account, which probably isn't very smart. But I transferred money when we were told. You know, and at the time of the transfers, they made logical sense. We have X and checks in checking. Transfer Y to savings. Yes, sir. No problem. Make that transfer right now. Now, I won't get into the dissertation I wrote to Pastor Sam and Sister Leanne <laughs> when I finally did check the savings balance. Trust me, it was a dissertation because I got it into ministries that we partner with, our bills, and a lot of other things. And I don't want to influence you guys in the least with ministries we partner with or any of that stuff. Um, but I sent Pastor Sam picks. Now, and again, he, he can share this if he wants, but on January 20th, and then another picture of March 25th, because on January 20th, we had $8,800 in savings. And, that's <laughs> and on March 25th, we had $17,000 <laughs> in savings. What? Now, in the dissertation, I did the math. Come on. But here, but here for the sake of um, being brief, too late, we're probably already an hour, hour and a half into this. Um, I'll just round the numbers. So for that to happen, that was about $1,000 a week going into savings. And without getting too crazy and telling you guys every bit of everything of everything of everything. But to get us all to a level where we understand and see what God did here. Um, if we took my paycheck and we subtract the car payment and the tithe and the money going to savings and the ministries we partner with and our electric and propane bill, <laughs> which was completely insane at $650 a month. Come on, man. We were living we were living on negative $200 a month to last us for everything else. That's not $200 a month, guys. That's negative $200 a month. Chase lets you compare monthly spending, and it gives you nice little pie charts that are pretty, yeah. and yeah. they probably make some suit somewhere happy. And here's the amazing thing. Our spending stayed the same, except for ATM withdrawals. ATM withdrawals went up, and I absolutely love when that ha when that happens because that's when God says, "Hey, go talk to that person and help them." And having said all that, um, we closed last Friday, April sixteenth, and when we woke up the morning of April sixteenth, before we made the transfer to write the closing check, et cetera, et cetera, there was nineteen thousand five hundred dollars in savings. Wow. Oh, God, it's good. Uh, uh, All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So you got 19000 whatever, in savings. Just give me a second. I'm just going to say it again. All of our technologies function effectively Amen. like right now. And we charge you seven times and double for the shame <laughs> for messing with our stuff in Jesus' mighty name. All right, brother. $19,000 in savings. Here we go. Yeah. So there's nineteen five in savings. No. So you have, at January 20th, we had, you know, 8800 So basically, there is almost $11,000 <laughs> that went into savings in two and a half months. Impossible. Then Jesus. Then Jesus. Amen. Gwen said that to me once, and, and, and I just love that statement. Then Jesus. <laughs> but I can't really stop there because, you know, 14.5 <laughs> and some change went to the title company, mm -hmm. leaving us more than enough for everything that pops up and nickels and dimes you when you're trying to move. I, I, you guys have moved before. There is always something. And it's always, you know, $20, $50, $100. All those add up to some pretty sizable numbers when you sit down and think about it. Yes, yep. they do. 
But as we're talking about the move, you know, it was probably March. And Shannon and I sat in front of the laptop and we were trying to figure out what, what would look good in this house. And uh, we picked out some furniture online. Nothing extravagant as we still have a dog. Over Easter weekend, God told us to go order it. Because remember, guys, I said the only thing we can do to mess this up is start putting our hand to it. Yeah. Yeah. To this right. moment, this is a done deal, et cetera, et cetera. We don't make a financial move without God saying okay right now. And we never will again. Amen. We never asked for it. Because both of us were just so grateful, thinking he's already done exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. But I know if I don't go here, Pastor Sam's going to want to go here. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat him to it because this is my testimony. So I'm going to speak it. And Deuteronomy 6, 10 to 13. Come on, man. And now, he's, and now he's probably smiling, even though I can't see him right now. <laughs> Let me pull it up real quick. Come on. Okay. Here it is. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your father, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To give you large and beautiful cities, which you did not build. Houses full of all good things, which you did not fill. Hone out wells, which you did not dig. Birds and olive trees, which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him, and shall take oaths in his name. Yeah, it's, here we are. We're in our home that we did not build. That was never before lived in because it is brand new, just got built. Filled with things we didn't buy. We didn't earn the money. In that son. And it'll be landscaped with plants and sod that we didn't purchase and cared for by somebody else. Now that kind of concludes the testimony i guess but there's just a couple more things i, I want to say before <laughs> I, I i i let sam just go gonzo nuts on this and start shouting glory but isaiah 55 11 says his his word never returns void amen yeah. yeah and second and second corinthians 120 says for all the promises of god in him are yes and in him, amen. The word is full of promises. We can find a set of verses to stand on for any situation. Yes. However, however, comma, if we expect all the promises to be yes and amen, our response to our father needs to be yes and amen. Come on, man. There is a faith factor. There's an obedience factor. There's a forgiveness factor. There's a love factor. And all of those are well documented throughout his word. And last, guys, let us never forget that the door to the throne room of grace is hinged with gratitude. And with that, I think I'll Pass it back over to Pastor Sam <laughs> and let him just <laughs> preach the pants off this thing. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing, Mike. Uh, you've done a fantastic job, just supernatural, of, of sharing it. And I, I always have to be quiet here because anything I say is going to over, overcome what you're doing there, just the way this is. But I, I'm very specifically want to say to everybody that's that's listening here tonight um this testimony is the same testimony that god wants to do for every one of us every single one of us it don't matter who you are and you one of the greatest weaknesses of the body of christ is 
that we all listen to what Mike said, and then we all expect God to do the exact same thing for us he did for Mike. Well, the end result will be the same. A house you didn't build, or whatever it is you're believing for. You don't have to have a house. That's not what this is about. The end result will be the fulfillment of your faith, what you're believing for. But I had a question come in tonight, Mike, that dealt with this very thing right here today. And uh, I want to deal with it right now. It, while you're on the phone, don't don't even hang up because I you got things you can say on this. And that is this. What if I do not have the faith or I'm not bold or I'm not outgoing or I'm not. And you can put any number of what was that statement you made, Mike? Self-limiting. Yes. Self-inflicted hindrances. There you go. Self-inflicted hindrances that all of us have, we can say. And. And. God, think about this. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. It doesn't matter your past. What did he just say? We had to forgive ourselves. It doesn't matter. You. It don't matter any of this. If you say, God, take me, if you're married, take us from where we are to that other side. What's he going to do? He's going to take you. And the only thing that stops it is what? Wait, not the pastor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I pointed at Shoot the messenger. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, no, no, because uh, it's like right, right here, right now with the community of faith. I can see that next place God's taking us. And I can get in the way. Like Brother Mike said, the worst thing I can do is get in the way and try to make it do something in my own strength. And I, I'm not going to do that. There's, there's this flow of God. When you're willing and obedient, you get to eat the good of the land. So this is my encouraging statement. And, and answer, let me see, answer one to that email which, which really needs a lot of answers, but my first answer is this. God takes every one of us right where we are yeah. and goes to the next level. Mary, mm -hmm. you didn't even say a thing yet tonight. You don't have to come in the door saying, please forgive me. <laughs> no, wait, wait. I want you to see this very specifically. Why? Why? It doesn't matter any of the details of your life. It doesn't matter. What? I mean, the day he did, he withdraws 23,000, they put 24 back in. You're like, are you serious? In a pandemic, in a downturn, in a, and there's 17 other things you can say. And it just comes back more than what went out. That's God saying, oh, yeah, I've got an answer for you that's beyond anything you can imagine. Beyond anything. Our only challenge is we get us in the way. Saying, well, yeah, but pastor, don't you know? No. I Not only do I not know, and please don't tell me. <laughs> Wait, I'll help anybody anywhere. But God has forgotten it. I, I, Mike, I want you to talk about that a little bit more. The process of forgiving yourself and why that's so important. Oh, you, you know. Forget the 90-second lady. I think you the got instruct, <laughs> Right. <laughs> I think the instructions in Matthew 6 are pretty clear. Because in Matthew 6. We look at the Lord's Prayer, you know, depending on which translation you're used to. And the way I learned it and the way I always go, revert back is forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it's just as 
just like we forgive those who trespass against us. So, and you go down a couple verses, and it talks about that, exactly how I just spoke it. Yeah. And the thing to me is, do we believe what the book says? Come on, man. Come on. Because because we can we can look at Paul's life when he was Saul at Tarsus. Yeah. And I don't care how bad you think you are or how bad you think you were. <laughs> Saul at Tarsus is over there saying, come on, bro, get on my level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, behold, all things have passed away. It doesn't say all the things that you're willing to share, except in those deep, dark spaces that passed away. No, 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 no. The lion became a lamb. And all passed away. Every last bit of it. Every bit. Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation. Go to John 3, 17. Yeah. God didn't send the Son into the world to condemn it, but by through him, He might the world might be saved. Amen. There's no condemnation in our Father. We're in the new covenant, guys. The veil was ripped from top to bottom. We, we're allowed into the Holy of Holies. We're allowed to have that relationship. Amen. 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 Some of us, I won't name any names, but every every single one of us can take the messages that God has spoken right here in the last month and go into our own life and say, what about me? It, it's yeah. never, it is never about anybody else. It's never about anybody else. Because you can't change anybody else. The only person you can change is you. So the, all of the questions are, so what about me? God help me. I forgive me. I forgive you. You do something to me. I, I forgive you. I, I'm not, I will never hold anything against a person another day in my life. Why? I want to be forgiven. And God says, if you don't forgive, I can't. If you don't forgive, I can't. And the number one person we got to work on it is ourself. You, what, what if you were, what if the other person was absolutely, totally, complete, 100% grade A, pure American beef wrong? It doesn't matter. The person you still got to deal with is you. That, Amen. The only thing you can do is look in the mirror. And the bottom line is this, this whole teaching on reconciliation. If you look at what God just did for Mike and Shannon, he blessed all this obedience. Now, I know Mike didn't go there night just out of, out of a situation of time and things, but he got to see a Bible created right in his room. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Wait, but, <laughs> but but if you're not willing and obedient to go to a Bible bookstore when you haven't already slipped and you still got to go buy your tennis shoes and it's my day off and I'm going to go buy a Bible for a woman and you're a man? <laughs> you you just you just moved mountains to buy a Bible for a woman when you're a man. <laughs> and yet look at what see what I really am I really am so glad you did Mike is you kept it very much simple on the bottom line basic line of it is a daily obedience to God yeah. it's daily and I mean we we walked it this, is we walked this with you guys and you guys did a good job oh go ahead there were trying times. There were trying times. I mean, guys, I, I, I spoke the verse because it's true. There was times 
that all Dan and I could cling to was the works. But then we got to believe the works. Yeah. And that led to the faith that we needed to see us through the next step. Yeah. Through the next step, through the next step. And through it all, yeah. it wasn't apparent as we were walking through it. But now it's abundantly clear. Not only was he setting before us and showing us, yes, this is what's going to happen. But he was guiding us to it and teaching us the lessons along the way that we were going to need to get farther on up that mountain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I won't get into there is no valley. I, I've, I've been controversial enough. I don't want anybody to shoot me down on there is no valley. I, I won't attack that piece of religious doctrine tonight. <laughs> I'll save that for another time, maybe. But uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I will say this. The second that you accept Jesus Christ, you're already higher than you could ever be. Yeah. Yep. You can't always go straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. Sometimes, sometimes you got you got to get rid of that excess baggage, get rid of that stuff that you've been carrying around that you shouldn't be carrying. Yep. That's where most people say, "Well, I, I, I'm in the valley." Well, no, you're not. You're still on the mountain. You're just shedding the excess. <laughs> Stop. So that pure faith is yep. left. Yep. Come on. Now I'm gonna back away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, because it, it, because here's the reality. Uh, you're in a beautiful home now. Uh, literally a Deuteronomy six home, one that nobody else has ever lived in. Now, to some of you, that might not ever be your, your desire. You might like a, a house that is 150 years old, and that would be your greatest thrill and joy. That's fine. Mike's not the standard. We're not the standard. We're given a testimony of what God does. Yeah. And, and then tomorrow morning, we walk out our faith with fear and trembling walking. Nah, I don't like that fear and trembling. With love and obedience, and we walk with God every day. Amen. What does it? What difference does it make if you're walking on the water, walking on a lake on the ice, whether you're walking up the side of the mountain, whether or not you're walking out in the desert? If you're with walking with God, it does not matter what the level anywhere is, because you're walking with the Father. And. Uh, mm -hmm. That question that came in earlier about that, I'm like, wow, that's really good. And remember this, no matter where you are, God will take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. Yeah. If you don't stop him and say, Amen. no, you can't do that with my life. Amen. The moment you say, no, I'm not going up, he has to let you stay right where you are. And you're not going to want that. You're not going to want to stay right where you are because that's not going to make any sense at all in any in any way in the mighty name of Jesus. Right. Um, yeah. But it can't be anything down on Mary. I don't like that stipulation. <laughs> it can't, because it can be. That's that would be, don't beat up Mary, because I like Mary. That would be out of the process we got happening here. So that's not the the greatest testimony in all of this is when we look back in another six months. There's going to be another huge miracle in all of this. Oh, yeah. That's going to blow the socks off of everything that, that anything the enemy thought he could do. Why? Because there's tithers and there's givers involved. And you can't, you cannot destroy. The destroyer is destroyed by the tithe. Amen. And he cannot recover from that. Amen. And there's always something hiding in the background that, you, that nobody knows about. 
that nobody knows about. And the blessing of the Lord. Amen. The, the thing I love the most about this is this is so full of the blessing of the Lord. Yeah, and, it's going to continue to and that's where it's going to stay. And that's where the blessing is going to be. Yeah. Well, Brother Mike, I know you got your granddaughter with you. So I better not hold you any longer so you can at least hold her or something. Yeah, good coochie cooer and all that other fun stuff. She should be asleep right now, but oh. right now she's uh she's looking at me and looking windows and <laughs> <laughs> doing what kids do. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I I appreciate your willingness and brother, I appreciate your obedience here tonight because yeah. A lot of people would say, ah, no, nah, this is my private victory, and I'm going to keep it to myself. And, um, <laughs> but you did a you did a, an amazing job to tell the story yeah. as it really is, and that is this is an infallible proof of Almighty God of how He works in our life if we will just absolutely let Him uh, let Him move in in a way that He wants to move. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank so you. Take every situation with everyone involved and make it work to the good. That's in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Love you. Love you too, Pastor. Thanks, Thanks for having Mike. me. Appreciate Thanks. you guys. Love you guys. Love everybody on here. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. We'll talk to you guys next time. Until we see you. Till we see in a little bit back over here with a smiling face and a bunch of ladders and chocolate. <laughs> All right, Pastor. Love you. Uh, now, love you guys. Bye. Now, let me say this. Some of you be like, Pastor, I don't want to have no victories like Mike because you're going to make me get on there and tell a story. No, I'm not. No, I won't do that. And if you're having one of these victories and you want to share it, and you're you're uncomfortable with that and you want to share it with us, that's fine. That's wonderful. Share it with us. But here's why I say this. This is why this came. Um, they were moving this week. And I, I called Mike three times and said, nah, let's not do this now. Let's wait till you get back on the road. Let's wait till you get back on the road. But Mike's like, no, God's talking to me now. I believe I need to say this now. Why? I don't know. I know this about our God. God is doing a mighty work on the inside of every one of us. And the thing that you should take away from tonight is, wait, Mike and Shannon are common folk just like us who have taken their faith and gone to do something in God by just saying, yes, today Yes. Tomorrow. Yes. The next day. Yes. The next day. Yes. Um, wait, what did you just say? Wait, everybody's going to have those statements of wait, 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 wait. Excuse me, Father. What did you just say I have to do today? You mean like right now? Yeah. Brother John said one the other night. God told him to stop and talk to that guy in the Walmart parking lot. Oh, yeah. And, the, yeah. and he, said, he said the guy was a big old huge guy. <laughs> but he was able to look at him and say, let me let me pray for you. Let me tell you about God. I, I got one brewing right now. I can't tell you the details of it because I, I won't. I can't do that. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be an amazing answer in God. You're going to see it. Well, actually, we got about five of them brewing right now, but here's the real, here's the revelation of it. You don't need to be the great apostle and prophet of the Lord conquering the world. You just have to be willing and obedient and you get to eat the good of the land and Say this with me. Even I, Even I can have an answer from God. Can have an answer from God. In Pastor, can you put this into some simple steps for us tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Number one, 
Decide what it is you need from God. Number one. Somebody write them down. Number one. Decide what you need. Number two. Ask God how he is going to do it. Number three, get busy doing his plan. I'm writing it down as we go. I didn't have this all set up. Mike just gave us a simple thing. Forgive. Obey. Give. And shout the victory. Ready? I'll give them to you again. Seven points. It's, it's going to be one of the only times you hear me say, here's seven points you can do. Watch this. Number one, decide what you need, where you're going, where you're at, what's happening. Number two, ask God how he is going to do it. Now, when you ask God how he's going to do it, this is what your paper should look like. What's that mean, Pastor? When you ask God how he's going to do it, go in with a blank sheet of paper and let him tell you something, okay? Don't go in saying, God, you got to do it like this. Why? Because he's got such a bigger plan. I'll tell you the story of the man of God in uh, California. He's sleeping. No, 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 no. I rebuke that, Mary, in the mighty name of Jesus. That is not happening. That is not happening. Please. Please just let it be right where it's at. You, you ain't seen nothing yet, Mary, what's coming. Listen to this story. This is a preacher of a church in California. It's Saturday night. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and his phone rings. He picks it up. He looks at it. Hello? And the guy on the other end of the phone says, I don't know who you are, but I got to give you my house, and I, am God. I don't want God to judge me. And he's like, what is that? And he hung the phone up. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. And he's just like, what was that phone call all about? Two weeks later, same time in the morning, watch this. The phone rings and the guy says, hey, preacher, listen to me. I am in Las Vegas. I have a home in California. I must give you this house. I do not want God on my case any longer. I will see you on Sunday. Guy's looking at his phone. It's the middle of the night. So he finally calls the guy. He said, here's my address. Show up. He pulls up in front of this house that's got a security gate. He pushes the button. The guy says, this is the code. He punches in the code, drives up a long driveway. Walks in. There's a water fountain with a huge opal. Yeah. 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 It's a mansion. And he's like, well, what is the deal with you? He goes, I am. I was in Las Vegas, and God said that I had to give you my house, and I had to take your house. Pastor, is that what God's going to do for every one of us? No. He's going to do something amazing for you. you. But the purpose of Mike's text, testimony we are partners and all is well, Mary. That's a good statement. It's a good statement. That's, that's. Whoa, the devil's getting his head beat tonight. Listen, why did Mike and Shannon tell the story? Not because you got to idolize them or be like them. 
God wants to do something big. Of course, people are going to think God's going to do it for me. I'm the preacher. Mike's not the preacher. What are you? What are you? He's an electrical engineer contractor of the big muckety mucks and the fixes machines. <laughs> he's got some kind of a big title that he, that he is, all right? And he's a man of God that listens. Yes. He's learned to hear God's voice. You want to know the greatest characteristic you can talk about these two? They have stayed in the presence and they know the voice. Yes. There's no glory here. Who can anybody glory in this? This is all God. It's all God. And there's so much more to the story that could be told. But as, as he said, you know, it's time to be done. Why did you just tell us another story? Well, because God has the ability to speak to people in the middle of the night in, in Las Vegas who you don't know knows your name. Well, Pastor, you think God can do something for me? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell Mary right now. I'm seeing God do something you ain't never I don't oh, even yeah. know it exists. Yeah. But he's doing something that's going to shank the devil. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's right, Mike. Very good. That's what I do. I am an ambassador of Christ, a minister there of reconciliation. One who's authorized to perform my father's work. Yeah. Amen. There you go. Well, I just like saying that big title, but I, I mess it up every time I try. <laughs> he's, he's an electrical engineer contractor of the big muckety mucks that know how to tear apart machines and do amazing things. No, he's an ambassador of the kingdom of God. But wait, so is every one of you here. What is it you've always been seeing going to happen? And you've thought, I don't know that that could ever happen. Start asking God to make that happen for you. There it is. Electro mechanical field service engineer. See, I told you it was one of those electrical contractor kind of guys that puts things together and is all amazing. Now, what's amazing about him is the same thing that's amazing about you. I've had three, I had five different people this week tell me, Pastor, my life is getting absolutely set free right now. What is it? I don't know what I'm binding every night that's setting you free. I'm showing up here going, oh, Jesus, show up so that something goes right tonight. And you know what? God is doing a work. And it won't be long. And every one of you will have a testimony just like this. Your first testimony is probably going to be, I was bound by this. It might be nothing more than just bad thoughts about yourself. And all of a sudden, they're just gone. And you're like, where'd they go? It doesn't matter. Don't look for them. Let them be gone. Maybe, you know what? I'm going to talk about Mary. Mary said something this afternoon at the noon program that was absolutely powerful. She said, I got to learn the difference between my father's voice, Mary's seed father's voice, and the heavenly father's voice. Yeah. Because there's two different voices. Don't. Shame your dad. I I know Dan Cottle's dad. I worked with him one summer. He's a, he was a he was a blast to be with. Uncle Paul, I, one of my favorite uncles, Uncle Paul. Got to ride snowmobiles with him. Got to drive lawnmowers. Work in the construction. Yeah, we did it. I I rode in a semi with him. I mean, I got some memories with Uncle Paul. All right. So I know Dan's dad. There's a different voice between Dan's dad and God Almighty. There's a different voice between my dad's voice and God's voice. Wait, your dad ain't, unless he was a bad man, 
What do you got to do? Take what they learn and add the voice of the Father from the Word of God and pull out everything good that they taught you and say the rest of it. The rest of everything else in their life say, my dad gave it everything he had, everything he knew. Thank you, Father, for my dad. Thank you. And what is, I, I, it was one of the most amazing statements, Mary. Why? Because it put that thing where it's really at. Yeah, yeah. There are a couple different voices in your head. All right, now everybody's like, oh, pastor's hearing voices. No, I can I, I always <laughs> knew that about you, pastor. You was hearing voices. No. You should hear your mom and dad talking to you. Yeah, that's what's going to they around. creased your life. But the, the words that are damaging and limiting, change those words to the words of the Father God. Because there ain't nothing limiting about our Father God. Amen. They ain't. They ain't. That, <laughs> sister, sister Becca, spell that one. They ain't. That comes right out of Eastern Kentucky. There ain't nothing about that, all right? I'm not sure if there ain't or the ain't or they ain't. It's all part. It's all part of one. And uh, you know, how many of you been like me ever since Mike told the story of getting forty dollars out of the paper towel roll? You've been washing your hands everywhere. <laughs> Remember, God isn't going to do exactly. God's not going to do exactly. Deal. No, but we're walking through a field the other day, and I found a quarter. My eye picked a quarter up out of the middle of a field. We found a dollar too at the memorial and so Rockford. it wasn't quite forty. Somebody make a post to see if my comments are working because I haven't seen anything move for quite a while now. Mike's title is the last. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Thank you. All glory be to God. All glory be to God. What an amazing testimony. <laughs> they ain't. I thought it was one word, Becca. I thought it was like one word. I haven't either. I don't know what that one is. I haven't either. Oh, I got you, Mike. You know, we heard a lot of testimonies from Dave and Gwen this, this year. I mean, not only did she get healed from cancer, oh my goodness. but um, God did some amazing things. There you go, Shannon. <laughs> Amen. Thank. I, I, I think you got to get the why out of there somehow, but I don't know how you're going to do that. But anyways, it's good. My roots are growing stronger as they sure are getting water. That's the way it is for all of us. It really is. It really is. Listen, I think one of the coolest stories that Mike told is giving that lady $30 and it turning into 400 Oh, my goodness. Yeah. About that one. I had God say to me the other day, I want you to have $259 cash in your pocket. $259 cash. I'm thinking. I I uh, I don't I don't I mean I guess I can go pull it out of the bank, but and and in that day, $259 cash came to my hand. It's like wow. Well, what's it for, Pastor? I bet we're about to find out. Yep. <laughs> Don't know yet. But. I mean, I mean, I, I'm like, all right, two hundred fifty nine dollars cash. Okay. Well, I looked at my hand and didn't have it. In a matter of hours, I have two hundred and fifty nine dollars. It's amazing, and it's a, it's one of those things. You're like, would you just look at that? What's he gonna do? I'm gonna go over here and buy a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house. I don't know what it is. Wait. Why do you always say those big figures, Pastor? Because he said he wants to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. 
And if you're not asking him for an exceedingly, how can he do it? Well, you know, Pastor, I'm just, just glad I got four wheels and they all got tread on them. Maybe he wants to give you new wheels with new rims. He can give the old ones to somebody else that needs them. <clears throat> See, thank God he's doing something. What if what you need is all of your kids saved? What are you willing to do for God to get your kids saved? Love was imparted to Brother Mike because an amazing act of selfless service came from him. Yeah. And what he did for my family was just... Matter of fact, I can't tell it to you publicly, Mike, but I got another story to tell you on that. Uh, that I haven't told you yet. And it's one of those wild stories that has come out of this. I just, I can't say it publicly, but uh, I am I will make sure I tell you. It's just one of those that you just look at it and you're like, how did you do that? How did you do that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. All right. It's time for us to receive communion tonight because we're going to just keep preaching this and Oh wait, I wanted to give you them seven things again. Yeah, yeah. you got the three. Isn't that just something? Isn't that just something? Now, number one, decide what you need. Number two, ask God how he's going to do it. You might be surprised what he'll tell you. Number three, get busy doing his plan. His plan. Number four, forgive. That's it. Number five, obey. <laughs> That's it. Number six, give. And number seven, shout the victory everywhere you go. Number four, forgive. Number five, obey. Number six, give. And number seven, shout the victory. Because God is doing a really big thing. Matter of fact, thank you, Shannon, for putting the verses in. We're going to go to communion next. Let me remind you, if you haven't heard this testimony of um, W.R.W. Shambach telling that story of the lady that showed up at the tent meeting and had the baby with the 26 major physical maladies, diseases, whatever they called it, And she stayed in a hotel, ate in restaurants, gave in every offering, and was there from the beginning to the end for her son to be healed. And the last night, God healed her son, 26 miracles on stage. Now listen, to any mom, that is worth the whole trip. Mm -hmm. But God's exclamation point was when she got back to her seat with her son, who's now walking, talking, completely healed. God started filling her pockets with money. People walked up and handed her money. And she had put her last $20 bill in the offering that night before the miracle happened. How come? Because God said, give. And she went and gave that last $20. That was when $20 was a lot of money. 
Watch. And when she left to go home, she not only had her son healed, she had more money to go home on than she had when she left. That's how our God works. Poverty mentality preachers are the ones that's told us to be broke and it'll honor God. That does not honor God. God is honored when you and I are the lender and not the borrower. I don't know if you guys can tell. I think we could talk about this for another three hours tonight and we'd go right down. I, we can get into tithe. We can get into offering. We can get into sowing and giving and all the rest of it. I'm not going to do it. Because it was done very well. And Mike and Shannon, thank you for sharing your life with us. Thank you for sharing this beautiful testimony with us. Thank you that you walk with God. Thank you that you walk with God. Thank you that you believe in God and you believe in people. Thank you that you trust and you walk. And all of us would say, thank you for being our friends. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you're saying, Lord, do it with me. Just, just tell them. Get you a $20 bill and stick it in your pocket and say, Lord, here's 20. Let's do something with it. Wait, listen to what he says. Because he might tell you, go get five fives or four fives. Well, get five fives. That'd be good for your 20. He might tell you, get four $5 bills. Why? Don't know. Keep them in your pocket. Do what he says. I got $259 in my pocket. What are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to shout glory and watch something. And the glory is going to go to him. And the awe is going to be on our face. And an infallible proof is going to happen. And everybody's going to be standing around going, would you look at the yeah, God math? Five fives for a 20. <laughs> Hey, if he can make a whole Bible and stick it in the bag, come on, man. What, what difference does it make? Here we go. Father, thank you. Thank you. We have seen your infallible proofs every day of this ministry. Every day. Every one of these people are an infallible proof. Lord, we didn't know these people. I knew Mike, and I knew Gwen, and Brother Dan. That's all we knew. You did this, Jesus. You did it. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you glory. Okay, hold it. I got to make that right. I did know Sunday and Chris. Oh. And I did know Audrey, okay? And there's probably going to be a few more in here. I say I do that too. <laughs> but it's not because we did anything in our power. It's because we said, here am I, Lord. Send me. First Corinthians chapter 11. Sometimes I just shout and get up and dance. Tonight, it's like, Sila. Sila, yeah, exactly. Like the nesty plunge. <laughs> 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, Read 
read the verses, okay? <laughs> Took the bread. When he had given thanks, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, take, eat. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, I skipped the whole juice part tonight. <laughs> and you drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Hallelujah. I, I, was, I was way out there with God talking to him, trying to talk to you, and I don't have any idea what I just said, okay? <laughs> Praise God, I was on track. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. First John chapter 4, verse 17. Love has been perfected in this, among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. Perfect love cast out fear and the torment goes with it. Ha! Rebecca, I'm not tired. I am in a big glory be to God. And, and what I saw Right there, when that happened, I saw God doing an amazing, miraculous thing for you and Christine. Hallelujah. And I was looking at it going, wow. <laughs> and then I came back out of it and I'm like, uh oh, does anybody know where I am? <laughs> I saw God doing a miraculous work for you, Rebecca. You are very faithful. You're very faithful. And we bless you now. In Jesus' name. Bless you, Velma. We love you. And Joy. And Mikey. And the little one. Claire. Claire. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Think about this, guys. Are an amazing example of what the grace and the mercy and the love of God will do in our lives in the matter of one year. Watch God bring these communion elements to life in your life right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Pray this prayer. It's the prayer of salvation. It's the prayer of rededication, and it's the prayer of hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Kathy, no, you can go back and watch it. Right. It's really good. It's a really good story. And we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that we're going to pray the prayer of salvation, and then we're going to bless you. <laughs> Here I am again laughing during communion. Jesus. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know I need you in my life. I know I need you in my life. In every area. In every area. And I know Jesus is the door. And I know Jesus is the door. To salvation. To salvation. And Jesus, I believe in you. And Jesus, I believe in you. And I receive you in my life. And I receive you in my life. In every area. In every area. And all your work for me. And all your work for me. And I know now I'm a child of God. And I know now I'm a child of God. 
And I thank you. And I thank you. Do this. Put all your sins in a big pile and say, there's all my sin. I have no human ability. I have no human ability. My son. To defeat it myself. Now put your hands out and say, I receive all of your righteousness. I receive all of your righteousness, Jesus. Ah. Filling every part of my life. Filling every part of my life. Thank you, Father. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. Pray in my heavenly name. Pray in my heavenly name. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. That's the first time you prayed that prayer. Welcome to the family of God. If that's the 479th time you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. We're glad to have you here with us. You just went from darkness to light in one prayer. You just went from fear to faith in one prayer. You went from your sin, which you can't be, to Jesus' righteousness, which obliterates all sin. And it's called the free gift of righteousness. You are now adopted into the family of God. And guess what? The blessing of the Lord is now all over every part of your life. I say, Pastor, I don't know anything about this. Well, that's why you got this group. Come hang out with us and we'll begin to show you the things of God. We'll begin to show you the things of God. And we'll teach you how to walk with him. If that's your first time you've ever prayed that prayer, I have 10 verses I'd like to send you that are foundation verses in the, in the word of God that'll give you strength and stability and, and a foundation in your life. I recommend you get them and you read them out loud every day, once a day, twice a day, five times a day, depending on how fast you want to grow in God. There's no limitation. He lets you do and have all of him that you can have. You see my email and uh, website. Website's got the verse of the month. Got some confessions, prayer confessions on there. We teach people to say, and we are, a, will be a blessing to you. In any way, this is how it works. You send me an email, I send you one. If you send me another one, I'll send you one back. We don't spam you. You'll never get a, a letter from us saying, hey, we're broke. Can you please help us? You know why we never send that? Because we ain't broke and we ain't making that statement. And what we need is your friendship and your partnership. And we need to make sure we're standing alongside of you and helping you walk with God. That's my place on this earth. And in your life, in Jesus' mighty name. That's this, whole, that's this whole community of faith. These are the most amazing believers you'll ever meet in your whole life. Yeah. will be a blessing to you. Are you ready? Run and get some communion elements. Here we go. Actually, I had somebody say, you know, Pastor, we should probably receive just a few more emails from you. <laughs> Man, I... I don't like that. I don't like no. I don't like being spammed. I don't like that. So I'll never do it. But I'll give you all the communication you want in Jesus. Ready? Somebody was still running to the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> Are you done? Pray this with me, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I bless these elements. I bless these elements. I call them sanctified. I call them sanctified. For this time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded. 
For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The chastisement. For my peace. For my peace. Is upon you, Lord. Is upon you, Lord. And by your stripes. And by your stripes. I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your body, Jesus. From your body, Jesus. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's receive the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. That your body was broken. You paid the price. And you said you endured the cross, despising the shame. And you called it all joy. And that joy, it was that we could receive your righteousness and live forever free from sin. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now we lift up the cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus. Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission. In my life. In my life. I am a new creation. I am a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. And all things have become new. And I thank you for it. And I thank you for it. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Is cast down in my life. Is cast down in my life. And there's no more condemnation. And there's no more condemnation. My conscience is purged. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. My robes are made white. And I will always be. And I will always be. The glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's receive the communion elements together. The hymn. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless Rebecca and Christine yes. with peace. In the name of Jesus. We declare the peace of God, which passes all understanding. We rule your heart and your mind. In Jesus Christ. And it is done. And it must stay done. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You ready? Let's sing it. What can wash away my sin? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What? Can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other found I know. 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. <clears throat> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What a night. Now, does anybody else have a question tonight you need answered? <laughs> like, Pastor, are you ready for a question and answer session right now? <laughs> yeah. Well, wait. I got one more question that was answered. This was a quick question I can answer tonight. Is it um, biblical for a man and a woman who once were married and got divorced to get remarried again? Certainly. That is exactly what the father wants, is reconciliation. Now, nobody throw nothing at me. Because Paul said, as much as is within you, live peaceably with all men. And he didn't mention anything about the women. <laughs> Every situation is different, but... If your hearts are healed and you solved all that stuff, my Lord Jesus, yeah. Watch God do a mighty work yeah. because of reconciliation. It's a wonderful part. It's really, really wonderful. And, of course, you know, everybody's got a different situation. So and don't, don't ever take one answer for one person mm -hmm. and make it be the answer for absolutely every person every time. Unless it's faith and love and forgiveness and mercy. Because all the characteristics of God, that is the answer for every person every time. Mm -hmm. But these these different details. You know, Mike and Shannon had 24000 put in your account. What if God wants to put 240000 in your account? Will you let him do it? Yep. So we can't don't don't limit God and say this is the only way God can move. Just don't do it. Now watch. I need prayers over Joey. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have spoken the word of God over Joey. You said, Jesus, I have given you power over all the power of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We declare the angels of Almighty God surround this young man. Keep him safe and completely healed. Every cell, every tissue. is made whole. Those are our words. Perfect womb, a perfect environment, a perfect baby, and the perfect will of God manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare peace and strength for Kathy. Yes. And Matt. And met in the mighty name of Jesus. Courage, boldness, peace, and perfect sleep and rest. May this family 
now have the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. We speak it done now. Like we did the first time we met him. In the mighty, the mighty name, name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We rebuke and cancel every spirit of infirmity. Every limiting spirit. Your power is broken. Yes. Cannot function. Peace and the angels of God surround and protect this family in every way. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glad you came on, Kathy. Please keep us informed. Please make sure you keep messaging us, letting us know. And um, life and life more abundantly in Jesus' mighty name. Well, here's the revelation. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday. When he filled Peter's boat and sank it just about mm -hmm. and then filled James and John's boat. And he's the same God that took care of Jairus, his daughter, and the woman with the issue of blood in one trip. And he's not only moving with Mike and Shannon and their blessing and what God's done, but he's working in Joey. And every one of the rest of you that we prayed for. Please put your faith with our words because we're speaking life to you guys. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything else I missed tonight, love? I couldn't see all the comments. No. no. Did you see them all? Mm -hmm. I so. You saw them all. I so. Really? Well, I don't know if I if I missed some. Of it. I didn't see the ones that. <laughs> there was two hundred and fifty-seven of them. Did you count them as you read them? I didn't. Right. <laughs> I know I saw the ones that I saw. Well. Thank you guys for being a part of this tonight. No, don't stop sending in your question just because it's not question and answer night. No matter. Tomorrow at noon Eastern 11, we're going to be here for an hour of faith. That's what it's all about is faith. And uh, we welcome you to be a part of it. If you got a church to go to, make sure you're in your church with your pastor doing your work that you do. If not, and you're with us, we'll be here. I'll be on my personal page on Sunday morning. Unless I forget and come on this page. <laughs> Are we going to be on the road or are we going to be there? Um, I guess we'll surprise them. We, well, we're probably going to be on the road if it's, you know, not a blizzard. But we'll see you tomorrow at that time. Now, everybody's hoping that the 92nd lady shows up and they're sort of waiting. But here's the reality. I've beat her again tonight. Cause 90 seconds means 90 seconds. And there's still three minutes and 27 seconds to go. So I'm not, I feel like Ronald Reagan that time. When he asked them, are the cameras all off for a moment? I've always been wanting to do this. <laughs> Where would we be if Eve had not eaten the apple? Oh, my goodness. In the glory of the Lord, yeah, like you and I are going to see in heaven. Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> what Phyllis say? You know, Sam, don't you go picking on the boss. 
<laughs> and the, uh, she's a good boss. <laughs> well, uh, here's the reality, Mike. I just looked over at Blog Talk Radio. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. And that volume is cranked like about three quarters. <laughs> How to how to come right out of the chair, bro? I would have come right out of the chair. Now we're almost to the ninety second. Everybody, everybody, just wait a minute. Now watch this. We're gonna turn this ninety second lady up, but today she's not gonna scare us. All right, everybody, watch this now. She thinks she's something, but she really ain't nothing. All she is is a hey. Please continue to pray for my healing, my thyroid, and my right eye. Father, we have spoken this. We have spoken this with Julian and Bamal. Now, this must manifest. You didn't say if. You said, I have given you power over all the power of the enemy. Body, function properly. Thyroid, live. Not thyroid medicine. Thyroid in Julian's bottle. Body, live in the mighty name of Jesus. Every one of this. Autism. Live in a perfect body in the name of Jesus. Spirit of infirmity, your power is broken. Every time anyone has ever said to Julian, well, your mama did and your brother did and so-and-so did and Aunt Charlie and Uncle Ben. That doesn't matter. We rebuke you, you foul spirit of infirmity. Amen. Your power is broken in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus she ain't even talking to them in the mighty name of Jesus life and life more abundantly and brother Julian and sister Mavon all the way around the world in Malaysia we bless our friend Elaine wherever she is tonight Lord bless her Jesus Bless her abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I'm just hanging out. The 92nd lady missed it. She didn't even say a word the whole night. She might even be on strike. You never know. She was in awe. Get some good stories. What a beautiful night. Thank you, Brother Mike. Yes. Thank you. I don't care what the devil thought he did. My people shall never be put to shame. It's God's word. Anything that falls short of that statement, you rebuke it and you command it out of your life because there's no shame in Jesus. He removed it all. All right. I'm just going to keep going. So I'm stopping right now. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Phyllis, for the good short closing verses. Now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. And amen. And amen. Until we see you again, that's what we say. We love you. We love you. And God and loves, God loves you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord.